Five. Just stay, baby. You know it. You're going to be good. Welcome, guys. Get yourself set up. Welcome to the group. Gonna train chest today. About three minutes. We'll kick it off. Just gonna get us going on our live feed here. A lot of good stuff going on. Going live. Going live. Check that internet connection. What's up? All right. So make sure you guys can all see. Pretty good. Welcome. Welcome to Chess Day Live, guys. Uh, <laughs> Dumbbell Anarchy. Today is Tuesday. Gonna get our pump on. Gonna be good. Got some people filing in on uh, on YouTube Live. Got a bunch of people tuning in to Instagram Live. You guys are doing this to me on Instagram Live. I'll do my best to keep the feed as healthy as possible so you don't miss out on anything. It's gonna be a hard one today. We got some really fun complexes coming up. So just gonna get my push straps on. Sip it on the pre-workout. Getting in the right mental state. I think chest day is my favorite day. I don't know why. I just like it a lot. I think it's because uh <sighs> It's, in my opinion, the best developer of the upper body, um, especially because you can see all that work on the front. You know that when I'm hitting some epic chest days, it usually matches the aesthetic that you're presenting on the front side of the, of the body. So, yeah, like chest day, like pushing weight, it's always fun. Do it with a buddy, do it with a bro, do a little spot ski. My cousin uh, gave a toast to Camille and I's wedding, and he, he made this joke, and he said, you know, Dave knew Camille was the one when she said those two magic words, spot me. <laughs> no, those three magic words, spot me, bro. Um, but yeah, so we're going to kick it off. We'll start with uh, just a really good upper body warm up. Then we're going to hit some prehab for the shoulders. Um, and then we'll get into some really nasty complexes. Today's beat and potato exercise is going to be our 50% for double complex, which is a drop set. We'll talk about how to scale for these um, equipment subs, um, how to substitute for more or less weight, and um, different ways you can attack this. Um, there we go. These wrist straps do not want to break. I don't know why I my wrists are getting thicker. That's weird. Either that or these are just getting harder to put on. <laughs> Maybe one more crank here. Yes, there it is. I like a good wrist support on a day like today, especially with heavy dumbbells or a lot of dumbbell stuff. It just gives you a nice firm grip, a good platform to press off of. So, yeah, I'm a big fan of these uh, Thunder, or Thunder Bro Conan wraps. Obviously, because they look fucking sweet. All right, so it's 10 o'clock. We got some people in here. I'm sure more are gonna file in as we go, but welcome. Um, so today is going to be Dumbbell Anarchy Chest Day. We're gonna start with a comprehensive warm up for the shoulders, um, and then we'll kind of go through um, a series of different chest exercises, which are really neat because the way that we put them together is pretty unique. Um, we're gonna start with five drop sets um, to kick it off, which is a real ass kicker. It's called 50% for double, where you hit 10 heavy reps, then you drop it to half the weight, and you rep to failure, or double the reps, basically, is the goal. Um, and then after that, I'm going to show you some variations of how to hit the upper chest with some inclined chest flies and feet elevated push-ups. And then we're going to finally finish off with some tricep work with 100 uh, tricep press downs. So first off, if you have a band, for the warm-up, what I want you to do is grab like a light band, 
Again, you guys know me by now. You know my, my little routine for the shoulders. I always start with pull parts. If you don't have a band for pull parts, I'm going to show you some subs. So the substitute for the pull part is just going to be different types of shoulder work. So you can start with swings across. You can go to scissors with the arms. And then you can just go to arm circles, forwards and backwards. And what I want you to do is get about 25 reps of each. So for the pull part, what you're going to do is with your arms straight and the band right at about eye height, you're going to pull the bar band apart until it hits the chest and then come back. So we're going to get 25 here, then we're going to go behind the neck, 25 here, then we're going to flip the palms over, and we're going to hit 25 here. We're going to go through a series of a couple different exercises and stretches in conjunction with that. So let's start with pull aparts, just getting some blood into the shoulder. Great way to wake up. Waking up with chest. I got my, my protein oatmeal in this morning. I'm feeling good. I'm ready to press. I mentally feel like it's going to be a good day today. I got my freezer in the background. You guys see my freezer? Uh, well, Instagram Live can't see it, but my YouTube feed you can see it. Four, five, and the neck. Five. You're going to come palms up now with your band. Two. Good. Okay. Next one, we're going to be on the floor. So I'm just going to tilt you guys down so you can see what we got going on here and make sure you guys have a decent view of what's happening. Okay. So. We're going to go through a series of shoulder stretches here on the floor. Um, so I'm just putting my towel down because the garage floor is not really super duper clean, which is fine. Um, we're going to do some posterior cuff stretching. So this is for the rotator cuff, really good for developing internal rotation of the arm, where a lot of people are sometimes restricted. So here's how it works. You're going to go on your back. You're going to start by pulling your shoulders down and back and just tuck your scapula nice and tight. Then you're going to hold this position as you roll on top of your shoulder. I want to make sure that that shoulder doesn't pop up when I do this. Then, nice and easy, I'm going to pull my hand down to the ground and back up. Now as I'm doing this, I'm just giving a little pressure at the end, right where it starts to get tight. You can even hold it for a second just to feel what your range is. And each time I'm trying to get just a hair, like a, a millimeter farther, you know, Go for about 10 reps here. You should be feeling it right in the back, the stretch in the back of the shoulder. Nine. Last one, I'm just going to hold and breathe out. And just really dig into it. It's about a 10 second hold. That's getting a little better. These exercises are working. Good. Oh, crack my back. That's nice. Got that one too. Okay, so I'm going to flip sides. So, I'm going to go to the other arm. Same deal. I'm going to start by pulling my shoulders down and back. Just anchor that scapula in and roll on top of the shoulder. And from here, just pull it down. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hold. Just relax it. This is a stretch you're feeling right in the back of your shoulder here. Woo. Good, all right, we're gonna stay on the ground and we're gonna go through another one called a reach roll lift. You guys who have been with us before have probably done this one once or twice. Let's see, a lot, of, a lot of requests here. Let's get this out of the way just so you guys can see. Okay, so for this one, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go Make a little fist with your, your hand, put it in the forehead. And your opposite arm, you're going to crawl your fingers out as far as you can. So that's the reach. And you're going to roll your thumb over, roll, and then lift. We'll go for 10 reps. Reach.
Okay, opposite arm. CBO, reach the arm, curl the fingers, roll it up. There it is. Yeah. Okay, come on up. Yes, sir. Good, that's one round. So we'll go one more round through. Tilt you guys up a hair. And again, get a little pre-workout in here. So it's gonna be again the 75 pull aparts, the posterior cuff stretch, and then the reach roll lift. Nice and quiet in the neighborhood today. It's weird. Usually there's trucks banging around, picking up garbage and stuff. Had a hard leg day yesterday. Three, four, four. Ten, one, two, three, four, five. Behind the neck. Good. The front of the body. Palms are up here. Yeah, okay, take down to the floor now. Just tilt you guys down so you can see. So I'm gonna start with the posterior cuff stretch. Control lift. You know, this like little shoulder prehab stuff, it's really, it's really important over time because like, you know, if you take our program for instance, four out of the five days of training are upper body days. So you really want to keep your shoulders healthy and just having a good routine to prepare them every day. If you do have any kind of nagging pain or avoiding injury or just developing good healthy habits to fortify the things that tend to break down. Um, it's really valuable. So now what we're going to do is we're going to heat up a little bit and we're going to do a short series with the shoulders where we're going to do 20 high pulls and 20 presses. We'll just go through this two times two just to get hot and we'll get on the bench and we'll start pressing. So this again is more activation in the shoulders. So what we're doing here is we're working the external rotators of the shoulder. Ten, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Shoulder press one. Three, four, Good, nice. So this stuff where you're kind of getting a little more active, what you're doing is you're, you're heating up the tissue. So you're bringing some fresh blood into the shoulder. You're actually pumping synovial fluid into the joint, this lubricating gel that this surrounds all your really important joints in your hips and your back and your shoulder and your knees. So it's good just to kind of get that stuff going, just to lube up the joint, so to speak. It's getting hot down here. That's always good for warming up. And just a short rest, about 30 seconds. All right, ready right to round two. Same thing. Shoulder prep, heating up the shoulders. Two. I like to start thinking about finishing with my shoulders back and the big chest on these. Okay. Ten more. Two. Yes. Good. Good work. All right. Cool. So here's what you're going to do. I'm going to set up my bench, and we're going to start going through our 50% for double supersets. And uh, what I'll do here, just so you guys can see, is explain a little bit as to how this is gonna go down. So we're gonna have five total sets here. I want you to aim to get between 10 and 15 reps with your heavier weight each set. So you'll hit 10 to 15 heavy, then you'll drop the weight, pick up half, and double it. So for instance, if I start with the hundreds, I might do 100 for 10, drop it, and then grab 50s and go immediately into 20. Yeah, if you don't have a bench, that's totally fine. You can do this on the ground as a floor press. If you don't have heavy weight, that's totally fine. What's gonna benefit you is one, adding a band. So you can put a band around your back, held in the hands for a little extra tension, and then you can drop that weight, go to the ground, and double it in push-ups. So let's say if you only have 35s, maybe you do the 35s with some band tension, and you hit it for 15, then you drop it, go to the ground, and then do 30 push-ups. So that's the 50% per double. So even if you're not dropping to a lighter weight, even if you're just taking it to a push-up, and if push-ups are too easy, you can even do a band-resisted push-up with the band again around your back and in your hands. There's a way to do it. We're not gonna take a tremendous amount of rest here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build up as I go in weight. So my first set, I'm gonna start nice and conservative just to try to feel the movement, and then, uh, and then we'll go from there. Bring you guys down. Let's go in about 30 seconds. I'll just tilt the camera down so you guys can see everything that's happening here. Good, okay. All right, so first set, I'm just gonna pull my weights out. Make sure everything's looking good. These reps should be nice and smooth. So don't rush it. Don't rush the repetition. A smooth rep, you can think of it like a count of two seconds down and two seconds up. So if I'm thinking a smooth rep, it might be one, two, one, two. This is smooth, okay? If you start going like this, and you're just you know letting it fall down and trying to pick it up off the bottom, you're losing tension in the muscle. So try to keep good tension in the muscle the whole time. It's also good, you know, if your weights aren't heavy enough, slow it down, put a little tempo on it, maybe three seconds down and three seconds up, It'll make it a lot harder for that first heavier set before you drop it down. So here we go. Set number one, chest day, 50% for dubs. Love this stuff. It's one of my favorite, uh, favorite complexes here. Okay. Here's my 
15. And I drop the weight down, grab my lighter bells. These are the 35s. These are really, I don't have a lot of variability in bells here. Here we go. I can drag it 30 now. Pumpy. Good. All right, that was the first one. <laughs> oh, definitely. Definitely hard. <laughs> okay, so we'll take about two minutes between the set. I'll let you guys fully recover for the 50% for double. Again, it's 10 to 15 heavy reps. Drop the weight in half or go to a push up and then uh, double it in repetition. So that one was 15 into 30. Um, the next one I go, I'm gonna bump up. So I'm gonna go heavier. I'll probably, this one try to, uh, you know, cranky, just bump it up a little bit. You know, I got a lot, a lot of room, five full sets, got a lot of time to get there. I wanna try to start hit some, hitting some really hard sets by set number, I set number three, four, and five. I consider these to be the really, gonna be the really hard working sets. So, yeah, it'll be good. Mm. You're also gonna end up with dumbbells all around the floor if you have lots of dumbbells. Just beware. Mm. So I'll push these out of the way. Not quite at the 50% there yet. Now one more minute. This will definitely fill your arms up with a lot of blood. I am sweating profusely already. After set one of exercise one, that's always a good sign. Set one, exercise one, sweating bullets. Okay. So here we go, 50% for double. Set number two. There's also a good rotator step, uh, cuff stretch right here. Here, I'll turn you up a little bit so you guys can see. You do this in the car sometimes. You take the back of your palm, put it in your, on your back, and the small of your back, and just posture up. It's that same kind of posterior cuff stretch that so you're driving around. Not that you guys are driving around a lot right now, but that's something you can do in the car to mobilize as you drive, <laughs> especially if you have any kind of shoulder stuff going on. All right, nice and smooth. Here we go. You're done. Yowies. Getting pumpier every set. Two minutes rest. Huh. Good. That's also nice, you know, you're getting a lot of reps in, so get a good chance to warm up. That one was 10 to 20. I might stick with that same kind of scheme as I build up, um, just to make sure the reps are nice and smooth, uh, nice, and, nice and seamless. Ooh, I tell ya, I'm glad I got this towel. I'm gonna have one dirty face when this is done. So, yeah, that was set number two. 
How are we doing here? Oh, good. We got a lot of people here all following the group. That's awesome. About one more minute. Um, you guys who are tuning in on Instagram and on Face on uh, YouTube Live, hang around when we're done with the workout. We'll do a live Q and A. Talk about the training today or anything you guys have questions on. Um, just to get some good, uh, you know, one on one time with you. You guys on YouTube can type in the questions. You guys on Instagram Live, there's actually a question mark box down below. That'll be in a while, but uh, you know, stick around for that. I'll try to move quickly so we have time for that too. Okay, set number three. We go heavier now. So now we're starting to get into the big dogs. Set number three. Nice and smooth. All right, come on, baby. Much of a drop on this one because uh, I don't have that in between rate, so this will be kind of hard. The double will be pretty hard. stuff. For the lighter weight, feel free to move at your own discretion, just pumping the blood in to finish. So it's not, that's not really a time under tension thing unless you're not getting enough intensity out of it. But yeah, that was good. Holy shit. That was getting hard already. So I got two more hard sets. I estimate that these last two sets are going to be the hardest. Now I'm already a little fatigued. I'm going to my heaviest weight. So this one will be, uh, it'll get nasty on this one, which is good. You know, like I said, if you're doing five sets, about three of them of those five should be really damn challenging. So that was a really good challenging set for me. As I go up, I just expect the last two to be real hard. So I'm going to try to take the full rest period. Just kind of collect myself, especially collect myself mentally, make sure I'm ready to lift the heavy weight. Visualize it, you know, get that mental trigger to get into a good state of aggression. Because uh, when the weight's heavy, there's no room for fucking around, really. It's funny because Camille starts laughing when the weight gets heavy, but I mean, in my opinion, there's only one way to lift heavy weight, and that's with everything you fucking have. That's what makes this stuff so fun is that, like, intensity, you know, like, lift or die. <laughs> Don't let that weight smash you. Or if it does match, you don't let it hurt you. <laughs> uh, okay. So now, I bought these ridiculously large weights. Holy cow. Wait, you know, like I said, you know, you could always, um, you could always add band tension to the dumbbell to make it a little harder. So I think I'll dry off my head, dry off my hands a little bit. I actually have a little chalk here I'll probably grab. Chalk makes you stronger. Okay, about 30 seconds now. So these are the big dogs. 
they look like circus weights. They're fucking enormous. And right now, I'm just getting my head into it. <sighs> All right. All right, here we go. Come on, big cat. Let's go to work. that came before it. So that definitely got me there. I'm going to take at least the two, the full two minute rest before I do my next set. And you know, on that one, you guys notice I just went for broke a little bit more because these are the last few sets. So, you know, I keep on saying things like make sure you're getting something out of it. Not every set has to be annihilation. But there should be two or three really hard sets. When I say really hard, like, I don't know if I'm going to fucking make it uh, sets in each exercise. Woo! That was good. Definitely want to rest. Arms are pumped out. Shoulders are pumped out. Even my grip is, is pretty pumped out after that. You guys notice those 60s, like, as I'm doing them? I'm just trying to rep them out. I'm just trying to get good contractions each set of my focus is right on my chest. And as I come out on those, sometimes for those higher rep ones, I'll even come out a little bit wider to focus on just squeezing them in to get the, the chest working. So those are little tips. You know, some are probably not the full range of motion, but there's a purpose there. It's just to pump as much blood in the muscle as you can. Uh, so oh, that was hard. Good. Now you'll go another, about a good full minute rest here. And then we're hitting our last set. You guys notice, you know, we're probably, yeah, we're right at the halfway mark, which is how this workout is intended because the meat and potatoes of today's workout is this 50% for double. And this is like the hardest motherfucking thing today. Um, so we're spending a lot of time here. The next thing, two things we'll do are fun, they're a little shorter, they're kind of ancillary, upper upper chest work, flies, decline or incline push-up or push-ups with your feet elevated. So I guess you could call that um, a decline push-up actually. But um, you know that it's intrinsic muscles, it's smaller muscle groups, it's not as much load, it's not as much volume. Um, and then we're gonna end with just a tricep burnout just to hit that muscle group hard one time today, uh, just to kind of cash out. But this is very, very good. So I hope you guys are getting 
what I'm getting out of this today, which is a massive chest pump and some good hard work. All right, let's we'll start setting it up. You got one more to go. Lock it in. Come on, Lipson. Come on. This last set, this is where the champions are made, you know? You got to pick your battles sometimes in training. Look at it today. I knew this is where I want to, this is where I want to fight. Right now, right where we are, I was kind of visualizing being right here, lifting the weight, what it was going to feel like. Take a second, just dry my palms off. Get my head dry. I chalk up these hands. Go through that process again. All right. Come on, this. Let's get it, baby. Come on, last one, best one. Last one, best one. Come on. Here we go. Good heart, 15. It's hard enough to take care of my lap. This lighter weight, <laughs> this is where it's gonna burn. Double the reps now. Oh, come on. Pump it, come on. Set for me. I went 15 to 30. Um, so, yeah, I got me a good amount of reps there. 45 reps those last two sets. And loading was pretty decent. I tried to keep the reps smooth when we were heavier and just pump out when we got lighter. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to work to some specifically chest fly work and upper chest work. So I'm gonna superset two exercises and I'll make sure you guys can see what I'm doing here. So over here, there you, that's the view I want you to get right there. Um, so, for the fly, I'm gonna go on an incline. And what I want you guys to do is come down, your arms, elbows are going to be bent, you're going to come down and back up. I personally prefer a little bit more of a fly press versus a straight arm fly because it protects the shoulder a little bit more. So as I come down, I'm going to get wide, but my elbows are going to stay bent. It's just like I'm hugging around a tree uh, before I'm going to eat trapped. The first exercise is going to be a feet elevated push up. 
with a nice slow tempo. So I'll show you here on my bench. I'm going to angle myself so everyone can kind of see what I'm doing. My feet are going to go up on my bench. You could do this on a couch. Totally doable. There's going to be a tempo of five down and five up. And we're going to do that for 12 reps to kick each set off. So, oh man, my chest is pumped out. This is going to be hard. So we come down. One, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. We're going to do that for 12. And then as soon as we're done, we're going to come over to our chest fly station on the incline. And we're going to bang out 30 reps on the incline chest flies. So if you don't have an incline, that's totally fine. You can do this lying on a flat bench, or you can do it if you were to lie down on the arm of a couch. So every couch usually has like a big armrest. You can just support your back on that armrest. You may have to balance a little bit, but you can do the chest fly that way so you're allowed to get that nice deep range of motion. The weight on the chest fly is gonna be super duper light. So I'm just gonna use like 25 pound uh, uh, dumbbells for the 30 chest flies. So one more time, it's gonna be 12 feet elevated push-ups, nice and slow, five down, five up, immediately into 30 chest flies. We're gonna do it for three rounds. Now this is gonna be more concentration work. Um, if you don't have something to prop your feet up on, like try a couch, try a chair, that can really work. Ideally, the way I would program this, if you have access, is with a, 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 a barbell push-up with your feet elevated on a box above the barbell. So kind of creating that incline angle with the chest. Give me rest about 30 seconds, and we'll do our first set. We get a good rest period in here. Woo! Let me make sure everyone can see what we got going on. Angle this out a little bit. This gym obviously is becoming a mess, but that's the sign of a good workout, you know? When your dumbbells are scattered everywhere, that just tells you you did some good work. All right, I'm gonna grab my dumbbells too. Something on my shoe. Ah, whatever. Okay. I should grab these dumbbells out. Man. Let me just keep them right here so they're on deck. I wanna to try to transition fast from one to the other, then I'm gonna rest for 90. Okay, here we go. Nice and smooth. That's hard. Oh, that's pretty fucking hard. Couple breaths, right in the fly. Woo! Push up 
in the chest fly. Set one to three. As you guys see in your dumbbell anarchy program, it's also written as banded flies. So I was just kind of showing you the option. If you don't have bands, you can use light dumbbells. Whew. Definitely want to rest a little bit after that one. Oh, wow. Those 50% for double just took a lot out of me. I know it was really, really challenging. Oh, I am cooking in sweat. I'm going to go grab a second bottle of water. You guys stay tuned. I'll be right back. 10 seconds. Oh, yeah. Very hard here. Very hard on the incline push up or the feet elevated push up. Yep. Especially hard on the way up, I find. Not the eccentric, but the concentric. I actually feel my muscles really starting to tremble as I, uh, as I come through. <sighs> well, you know, you made this bed, Lipson. You got to lie in it. At least I'm doing it with you guys. Can't say that I don't know what we're getting. We're getting ourselves into here. Let's go in about 20 seconds. Second set, 12 reps, five down, five up, 30 chest flies as a super set. Pumping out the chest and sweating our balls off in the garage. All right, here we go. Trying to hold that tempo here. Hard, hard, hard. Oh, shit. All right, chest flies. Fucking A, baby. This is chest day. No doubt. Leave no doubt that this is chest day. Come on, Lipson. Don't fuck off here. Come on. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, God. Oh, ow. Oh, gosh. Holy shit balls. Oh, ow. Oh, you better grow chest. You better be growing. Oh, God damn. That was freaking hard. Oh. Nasty Complex is brought to you by Dumbbell Anarchy and Muscle Anarchy. <laughs> oh. A lot of the inspiration for these types of Supersets and schemes comes from some of my friends in the world of elite bodybuilding. So, you know, it's kind of cool. We can adapt it to just like uh, basic equipment, more functional movement type of stuff. But gosh, this chest day, holy shit. I mean, this is just freaking nasty. We got one more set. We got one more set here, this superset. And then we're basically done. It's just one tricep cash out to finish. So, you know, this is the home stretch, guys. 
we're almost there. I know that I bitch and moan about how hard it is and everything like that, but don't make no doubt, I, I love every second of this. This is the best hour of my day, as Jason Ackerman would say. Uh, see how we're doing on time? Oh, we're perfect. Okay, cool. So we got one last set. I mean, dude, look at this fucking chest pump right now. Um, same deal. 12 slow tempo push-ups. So we're going to go five seconds down, five seconds up for 12. Come off there, catch your breath, right on the bench in a 30 incline chest flies. You can also substitute this with a standing banded chest fly. If you got like these things with the handles, um, you can do it like that. I just chose to do it this way because I figured a lot of people might not have those. Um, and it's just variation for me. Gosh, I mean, the sweat on these freaking things here is insane. Holy cow. Drink a little water here. I give myself about 30 more seconds, and then I'll get right into the last set. Oh, Mama Sita. This was hard. This was hard, David. Mental note. Not an easy day. It goes to show you, you know, you don't need a tremendous amount of equipment to get totally smashed. I'm excited. I'm getting ready for my 30 day shred. So I'm going to be joining the group this next, this next evolution of the shred challenge. So I'm already thinking about my diet, thinking about my training just to harden up a little bit, do a little kind of mini cut just to improve the quality of the composition in my body. All right, no more procrastinating. Here we go. Last one, best one. You can do it. Come on, big cat. This is where you make your money, buddy. Come on. These last sets are where, where all the good stuff's at. Left. Oh. 
taught today, and this is going to be hard today. Oh, gosh. All right. So, yay. This is actually not a bad news. We're, we're done with all the hard stuff. Yay. So we're going to cash out with 100 overhead tricep extensions. So what you can do is if you have a band like me, I've already got my band hooked up here. Um, you can do this with the band. I might attach a PVC pipe through the band and just do your extensions like this. If you don't, you can use light dumbbells or soup cans and do them like this. If you don't have an inclined bench or a bench at all, you can do them on the floor with light weight. It's 100 reps. Accumulate 100. But it doesn't have to be 100 in a row. So I want to try to clip out sets of maybe 30 or 50, try to get this done in anywhere between two or three sets, just to pump out the triceps. I'm going to try to dial in the right amount of tension. I'm using my, you know, Thunderman here. Uh, so, yeah, that'll be a good amount of tension, I think. Well, let me grab a dowel, just a broomstick, and I'll show you. So, nice and simple. This is going to be my setup right here. Now, you don't need the, the dowel. You can just use the band, or even two bands, and grab them with your hand. But, oh, yeah. Let me move this back of here. Let's see if I can get some rest here. <laughs> okay. Stay. The hardest thing is like getting into this, I found. So let me put it down. I'm just gonna rest 30 more seconds and then hit these. I'll hit a long set. A long set meaning 30 or 50. And I'm gonna feel my muscle. Because as I'm going through it, I want to get to the point where my triceps are really burning. When it starts to get a little harder, a little slow, that's when I'll rest, and I won't go to absolute failure until I'm getting really close to that 100. That's when I want to cash out so I don't get that neural fatigue too much. I am sweating through my Thunder and Conan wraps, my shirt, my shorts, my shoes have sweat coming out of them. I mean, geez, I don't think I need to do much more cardio today. <laughs> uh, okay, so last cash out, and then we'll do some Q&As. You got this, God, I'm so wet. Dry it off a little. <sighs> okay, yeah. This is what you work for, man. This is where you make your money and get the results you want. It ain't easy, for sure. It ain't easy being cheesy. I don't know what it is. Whoa, I'm okay. Okay. There, that's not right. Set one is a set of 50. The rest of 30 seconds. I'm going to see if I can repeat that same effort to cash out to 100. So this is quick. This last one should be really hard. Because that, that was pretty challenging, totally fresh. So I imagine this next one will be harder. Be harder now that I'm a little pretty fatigued. You guys have done a good job today. Hope you've enjoyed the chest day workout. I know that I love I love this stuff. So, so cool, so fun, so effective. I mean, I just, I love the results. I love the challenge of training. I love not getting hurt, you know? So that's why, that's why this stuff is it's my jam. Just want to be better at it and share it with you guys. All right, here we go. I'm going to try this again. Oh, that was, a, that was a smoother transition, didn't it? Yeah. <sighs> 
Yeah. Shared a story. Good job. Go back here. Go to my. Okay, go on. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Owies. All right. That really hurt. That's chest day. Gosh. Oh, a couple of just radio check here. You know, shoulder feels okay. Everything feels like it's where it's supposed to be. Stretch down. Um, stout stuff. Stout stuff there. So just to recap that whole workout, we started, and this is our Dumbbell Anarchy program, which is an adaptation of Muscle Anarchy. Muscle Anarchy is the same thing, but we use some more barbells and more equipment. Um, we started with shoulder prehab. I, mean, I want you to take away this, this idea of it's not just about going in and smashing yourself in a workout. It's about making yourself injury resistant and fortifying your joints through hypertrophy and through good, smart, preventative exercises. So we started with prehab. We did pull-aparts, posterior cuff stretches, um, reach roll lifts. Then we did a shoulder prep to actually pump some heat and synovial fluid into the shoulder with the high pull press combo. This was just likely to heat it up. The meat and potatoes of today was the 50% for double flat bench sets. So those were 10 to 15 heavy reps, drop the weight by, ha by half, and then double the reps as a superset five times through as a five set. So I mean there, we were averaging around anywhere from 30 to 45 reps each set. So that's a tremendous amount of volume. That's probably close to almost, you know, 200 some odd presses. Then after that, we got good loading. We got good volume in there. We went to some ancillary movements with the feet elevated push up with a tempo concentration work for the upper chest into a high rep chest fly. Again, concentration work just for the pec lightweight. And then we ended with a tricep burnout. So that took us almost exactly one hour to go through it in a really comprehensive way. At this point, I'm, I'm just done. Like I don't feel a need to condition right now. Um, I'm joining into the 30 day shred group later this week. I'll be doing the challenge with them. So what I'm going to start doing is a couple hours from now, maybe in the flip side of the day in the afternoon, we'll do some fasted cardio. Um, but that's really all that, that we need unless you're on a, CrossFit competition route or something like that. That was plenty of capacity and muscle breakdown and time under tension. Like, you know, I'm feeling pretty good. There's no need to beat a dead horse here. Once you spend anywhere from 90 or 60 to 90 minutes, you don't need to spend more time in the gym. I'm going to cool off. I'm going to refeed right now because that was a lot of muscle breakdown. So this is a great time for your protein shakes, a good meal with lots of micronutrients. Um, carbohydrates, protein. This is an ideal time to get that stuff in to kind of feed around the heavy lifting to create an anabolic signal to help store that stuff up, protein synthesis, growing new muscle, absorbing the nutrients. So this is a really valuable window um, that, that we're in right now. If you guys are interested in all at doing uh, like a little Q&A, and I know we got, you know, 15 people on our, our live feed on YouTube. We got, you know, 30, 30 to 50 people on our Instagram live. Ask a question. You guys on YouTube, you can type in a question. You guys on Instagram live, there's actually a little question mark box at the bottom of your screen. And type in a question. It'll give you a second just to answer some stuff. And uh, while you do that, I'm going to dry the, the sweaty salt out of my eyes because I can't see right now. I'm so sweaty. Holy cow. That was hard, Candy. You want to do the Q&A with me? Ew, you're so sweaty. Yes, I'm sweaty. Obviously, obviously, I'm so sweaty. No. Yeah, you guys on the Instagram or the YouTube live feed, thanks for joining in. I love we're getting regular here. Keep tuning in. Tomorrow's going to be back day. Back day's going to be fucking sick. Get thick, get wide. Um, so we'll have another really fun one tomorrow. You guys on Instagram live, tune in. We're going back day tomorrow, too. I post this stuff on my story and give you guys the link to the live feed if you want to join in. So, you know, and, and if you want to see the full workout, yeah, it'll be up on my story, but it's also saved on YouTube, where if you want to do it later in the day in your garage, you just click on the YouTube feed and follow the Thunder Road Chest Day with Dave. 
All right, so now let's take some questions. Nobody's typed in questions here. I'll wait for you guys to do that, and I'll take a question on Instagram Live here. So here's one. Um, who are you quarantined with? I'm quarantined with my wife. Yeah, uh, Camille and I are uh, really trying to take this as serious as possible. Um, we don't really leave the house. We'll leave the house maybe once a week and go to a very, very quiet um, beach where there's nobody there and just kind of look at the water for maybe an hour, but we're freaked out about leaving the house. So we pretty much stay here um, and we're in the garage training, we're in the house working, uh, we have a boat that will go on like a boat ride, um, maybe a couple times a week just to get out on the water, we'll walk up and down the street with our dogs. And like I said, once a week, we might take the car down to a very remote area near us to just see the water be on the beach without people around us. But <coughs> we miss people. Uh, there's no getting around it. I miss people. Cam misses people. It's We're making a sacrifice, you know. It's Everyone makes a sacrifice. I mean, you guys know Lent, right? You're giving something up. We're, we're giving something up for the greater good of humanity and the people around us. So, you know, it's not comfortable, obviously. There's things that we want to do. But um, I think we're all strong enough and we're all – you know, have the right things in our heart to be okay with it. I just, we still have a lot of good things. I'm very grateful for you guys to be able to train with you, to share information, to have, you know, we have such a captive audience right now with people looking for like workout ideas at home. And that's literally all we do. All we do is work out at home. So uh, it's really fun to get to share that with you guys. Um, if you guys have any questions, please just type in the question mark box. It's on the right hand side of your screen. Let's take another one here. Um, Okay. Feel the shoulders burning as well as the chest on benching. Is that normal? Do I need to change something? You know, typically where you feel things burning, it represents weak points in capacity. I would definitely, if you feel your shoulders fatiguing first in something like a bench press, you might invest in some extra shoulder work, kind of like what we did today where we just pepper it in. Every upper body day, I'm always getting shoulder work in because this is like a critical joint. Um, you know, I'm pointing to my left shoulder because it's actually all fucked up. Like I got torn biceps, tendon, torn rotator cuff, but staying on top of it allows me to train pain-free and stay out of the trouble. So, you know, if you feel these things fatiguing before the primary movers, I would definitely address it with some additional exercise to strengthen those things up or maybe to build some capacity there. Um, yeah, that was a good question. Um, is your wife able to squat? Yeah, she squatted with me yesterday in Nobel Anarchy Leg Day. And um, I mean, obviously we're doing with this dumbbells, but that all of our anarchy leg days are just, they're so brutal. You don't need a lot of weight. I mean, they are just like tempos and volume and isometrics and partials and like, so the weight isn't heavy um, relative to like her one rep max, but it's still really effective in terms of muscle building. You guys from uh, anarchy know what leg day is like. It's a real experience. I got a friend who's a strength and conditioning coach at a D1 university just recently started following our anarchy programs and he's texting me every day being like fuck you with these tempos you're such a jerk and i'm like yeah like that's that's effective um okay let's see here's one how do you feel to be a first-time dad I'm, I'm so excited i'm so excited to be a dad i i uh you know i just want to be a good husband and father that's all i want that's all i want i want to be able to provide for them i want to be able to give love and attention um and and part of that too is is being good with yourself you know like that's why I like you know I, I invest in training i try and invest in in making myself right because it's like when you get on the plane they say make sure you secure your mask before helping others you got to be good for yourself before you can really be good for anyone else so right now i'm trying to make sure that number one that I, i'm in a good headspace so i can be the best for camille and hopefully the best for our our child when they come, our fingers are crossed. We're just praying every day, and, and it's, it's it's an exciting blessing to be here right now. Um, let's see. Do you uh, do you or can you release daily, weekly videos talking about why methodology? Yeah, um, we had a lot of ideas about this. Everything from a book called the Muscle Anarchy Book of Methods to um, Marcus, Philly, and I are working, you guys will be excited about this, Marcus, Philly, and I are working on a webinar, um, kind of like an online seminar, talking about hypertrophy methods and the context of functional fitness. 
if you look online, we have something called uh, Thunder Bro University and some of our YouTubes, or just look, you know, I made our media guys put together some of the methods, but we need to explore it more and explain it more to you guys because, you know, having a small understanding of it is cool, but if you have a deeper understanding of it, you're able to understand the target better, what you're doing, why you're doing it, how it's supposed to be done, the adaptation that you're trying to elicit in the muscle. Um, so we're working on that, and we're going to do a series of educational stuff for athletes and coaches because there's equal benefit. I know as an athlete, I'm always better at training when I understand more about training. Now, part of that understanding comes from experience in terms of like just doing it yourself and being in the gym. But the other part of it is actually looking at the science and understanding, like, oh, this is why my muscles are burning. This is why I'm sore 48 hours. This is why this method worked and this one didn't. This is why I plateaued. This is why I got injured. Um, so, you know, that understanding is really valuable to you from both perspectives, and we're working on that stuff. Um, oh, and I'd also, <laughs> I'd also encourage you to check out the, the book I wrote called Hypertrophy for Functional Fitness. It doesn't dive that deep into um, kind of the, the methods as much, but more of the science behind hypertrophy and some of the things that are associated with it, just kind of a basic understanding of those physiological adaptations. Um, okay, got more cues. Uh, what's your favorite exercise and why? I mean, that, that's I think that's really kind of contextual to what you're working on. Um, if I had to pick my favorite ones for developing a good physique, um, I think a squat variation, a bench pressing variation, uh, particularly an incline bench press because that develops the upper chest because you're like in a square looking chest. And, um, and and low rows really are, I, I, find, I find, create the most compelling. I mean, it makes sense because you're recruiting the most musculature. You know? So those are the biggest bang for your buck exercises, I think. All right, another one here. Any tips, uh, any tips for knee collapse? So like if your knee is kind of caving in when you squat, um, you could do um, banded adduction uh, or ab abduction or abduction. So there's a couple different machines. You can also do this with a band around your knees where I'll show you here at the camera. Oh, there we go. Okay, so you're gonna drive your knees out against a band. That's a good one. Uh, just the range of motion too is usually a culprit, right? So range of motion restrictions in the hip, especially with regard to the internal and external rotation of the hip can sometimes cause the knee to compensate. Uh, you can also do things like just changing your stance too. Like if your stance is, is, is a little wide, you can bring your feet in and your knees won't collapse in as much. Um, so yeah, a couple different ways to attack that. Uh, which you feel is more effective for strength hypertrophy, squats or lunges? Uh, probably squats because you can load more. So there's, there's more um, mechanical loading. Uh, it's more of a compound movement. I like lunges for people who have like back injuries because you don't have as much spinal loading. You can keep your chest nice and upright. Um, but, uh, yeah, I definitely think that a squat variation, and you know, like people think about squat variations, like just the barbell back squat or front squat. That's not it at all. You've got the hack squat, the hack squat machine, uh, a box squat, the leg press, like the leg press is a variation of a, squ of a squat. So I very rarely, um, back squat heavy, but I'll put, you know, 2000 pounds on a leg press and get a heavy, heavy loading stimulus. So just, you know, any, anywhere where your, your knees are bending quite a bit, I consider a squat variation. Okay. Um, that was what we just saw. Let's keep going down here. Any more questions? Oh gosh, I don't want this. Okay. Well, I'm not good at working Instagram, obviously. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Oh, go out. Okay. How do I collapse this thing? Nope. Didn't work. Okay. So I fucked this up, obviously. I can't figure out how. Okay. We're back. <laughs> I am so bad at this. Come on. There I am. Okay. Sorry, guys. David, answer my question. I don't, I didn't see, answer my question. Where's Cammy's question? Hold on, okay. Is Cammy in here somewhere? Okay, wait, okay. Oh, okay, how do you handle being the luckiest man on earth and being pregnant with the most wonderful woman in the world? 
um, it's hard to handle. It's hard to handle because um, I feel things deeply. Um, you know, I don't like, I love, um, and uh, you know, Camille is amazing. She's the best. She's, I don't know what to say about this. I feel so lucky to have found my wife and I feel so lucky that we're here right now. And when I think about it, it just overwhelms me. I'll go to the next question. It just overwhelms me. Okay. Um, all right. Trying to gain muscle, which of your programs would you recommend? Um, okay, so if the goal is muscle gain, I would recommend something that's more pure hypertrophy. If you're a novice, try the Get Huge program. It's very basic. If you're like intermediate to advanced, muscle anarchy. This is, and I would just do the hypertrophy pieces. That's what we did today. We only did the hypertrophy pieces. Do that. Great, great stuff. A lot of exposure, a tremendous variety of methods. Um, just, you know, it's, it's my favorite program for building muscle. Uh, if you're at a workable level of body fat, maybe skip out on the conditioning. You don't have to condition as much. But I would do muscle anarchy in conjunction with a caloric surplus that probably looks like at least 20 calories per pound of body weight and enough protein, at least one gram of protein per pound of body weight per day. That's a great place to start. One to two pounds a week is a good goal, a nice trajectory for putting on quality size. Um, Continuing to go. Um, what program did today's workout come from? This program we did today is from Dumbbell Anarchy, which is a dumbbell-only adaptation of muscle anarchy. Yeah, we use like some bands, obviously, um, but um, but it's just dumbbells and some bands. And there's always substitutions if you don't have bands. There's always substitutions if you don't have the right amount of dumbbells. But I tell them like, hey, you can do everything with three sets of dumbbells and a couple bands. This is a stout program. And you saw me like just freaking dying, um, getting a lot out of it. So this is Dumbbell Anarchy. And if you're in Muscle Anarchy, you get free access to Dumbbell Anarchy. We did that for all of our members, um, you know, for those who were training in gyms that had to go home. We just wanted to make sure they had a clear trajectory to be able to continue training and getting the program that they really liked, Dumbbell Anarchy. Also, um, same program we use for the 30-day shred. So in 30-day shred, we do... Dumbbell Anarchy plus additional cardio and depletion workout fasted with our dietary prescription, our schedule, and, and, and the special protocols we use with diets and supplements. That's how – that's really effective for, for cutting down on body fat. And that challenge is open for the rest of this week. Registration is open. We start on Monday. So if you're interested, I recommend you get in now. The spots are all filling up, and we're really excited. You guys are going to be posting some of the results this past month. I mean, dude, we had people losing 15, 20 pounds in a month just – I don't recognize some of them. And um, and a lot of these people are actually going from that 30-day shred right immediately into the next one. They're going to make it an eight-week cut. So the spots are filling up really quickly. I recommend getting in there. Um, okay. Can you make kid Conan wraps? Oh, that'd be cool. Um, here, I'll show you these. These are awesome. Uh, our friend Jared... Richmond, who's a weightlifting dude, Olympic weightlifting dude, designed these. And I said, man, these are awesome. I won for Thunder Bros, so we engraved Thunder Bro on them. And um, I don't know, I'll ask Jared. You know, like they're not they're not our top seller, so uh, we don't invest highly in them. But it's one of those things that's like if you like them, they're there. And here's the thing. You could actually make these into a kid's wrap because, um, what you say, you're two and, uh, two and a half. Might be too small for two and a half. But they're customizable because these straps actually come really long. So you can cut the straps to the point where they're literally like, look how small this is. That's that's how small you can make them if you want them to. Um, so you might be able to get away with it with the full with the full wrap. Um, oh gosh, I love talking to you guys. Good questions. Um, and you guys on the YouTube are still sticking in there. You guys had to ask some questions, type some stuff in. Um, all right, let's keep going. Um, just give you guys some good stuff. What do you use in the beard? Nothing right now. It's just sweat and salt. It's not really long enough. Camille's going to cut my hair live with my barber uh, probably at the end of this week, and she's going to do some beard trimming. I like to use um, – we actually make a product called um, Hair, Beard, and Face Moisturizer. So it's Thunderbro uh, Hair, Beard, and Face Moisturizer, which is non-chemical moisturizer. I really like it. It makes it super soft. I know it's like 
all branded stuff. But what I did was I found one that I really, really liked. And I said, this is awesome. Let's put Thunder Roll on it. <laughs> so, um, so I don't make it. <laughs> it comes from it comes from our friends at this company called Doc Spartan. Uh, but yeah, that's when I like Thunder Roll hair beard piece. And also, like, I'll use the same thing, my, my beard and in my hair, and I'll just put it out the shower. I don't even put, like, hair gel or anything in my hair. Um, yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, if you're struggling to get enough protein, is it okay to drink more than one protein shake? Yeah, I do that. Like when I'm uh, when I'm in caloric surplus or even cutting, because my protein intake when you're cutting actually skyrockets from 40 to 50 percent of your total calories. So I might eat 350 grams of protein a day cutting. Um, I'll do a shake in the morning and a shake before bed, so that already gives me about 100 right off the bat. And then from there, all I have to do is, is fill in the rest in meals. It's hard to eat that much meat in protein. Um, egg whites help too. So I'll do uh, lean ground turkey or lean ground uh, lean chicken breast and put egg whites on top to amp up the protein in about 70 grams of a meal and a couple of meals a day. Um, good question. Okay. Oh, that was the same one. Let's go to another one. Uh, that was the same question. Okay, here we go. Do you have any recommendations on a place that actually have rigs and stock? Seems like it was good. Um, yeah, that's a good question. I know I'm getting that a lot. It's just like equipment, right? It must be frustrating to be like at home, you want to train, you have the time, you don't have the fucking equipment. Um, I got a couple of recommendations for you. Not a lot of people think about this. The first place they go is Rogue. I mean, obviously, everyone's going to go to Rogue, so they're most known, so I don't recommend that. Um, then people go to these, like, ancillary Rogue imitators or, or companies like Rogue. Um, so, like, they'll, they'll go to their local equipment distributor that makes, like, the, the similar stuff. But they're probably sold out regionally as well. Not a lot of people are trying gyms. Gyms right now are closed, and all of my friends that own gyms are um, really desperate to make some money. So I would call some gyms and ask if you can lease some equipment. You know, like they're closed up to be like, hey, can I grab a, a wall rig or something or some dumbbells or a bench and I'll pay you X amount a month. They'll, they'll take that in a heartbeat. You know, obviously you have some agreement to make sure that you don't steal the equipment or something. But I think that's a really good place to start. You call your local gyms and be like, hey, I'm really desperate to train. I'm, I'm willing to pay. Can I lease some equipment from you guys? I don't think people are exploring that avenue quite as much. Um, another thing is used equipment places. So like regionally, uh, at least here in like Florida, like there's tons of equipment places that buy used home gym equipment or when gyms close down there, buy their used equipment. So there's one out here in Florida called Bandit Fitness, but there's probably one near you that does the same thing. Um, so I would, I would look into that. Another one, um, you know, places like outside the CrossFit ecosphere, like PowerTech. PowerTech is like one of my favorite companies. They make home gym equipment. That's their jam. So they have tons of stock of this stuff. But um, right now they're running discounts. If you use the code Thunderbro, you get 10% off. Um, T H U N D R B R O. Check out what they have. Even if it's a machine, um, like I love their lap pull down machine. See this thing here? It's kind of similar to this. I got this thing like for nine hundred dollars. It's a four thousand dollar machine. It's used. So, um, so yeah, like I, I would encourage you to maybe look into some of those places. I know it's frustrating. And then the last thing is you might just make your own equipment. Honestly, um, I saw some good tutorials on like you know. I don't know if Home Depot is open right now or not, but just with cement, creating cement weights, um, you know, creating a bench, just doing some home fabrication, that might be an option if, if nothing else is available. There's always a way to train. You know, it, it, it's it's always there. You just gotta you gotta want it. You gotta find it and be hungry, and you'll find something. Um, tip for erectors taking over in the deadlift. Usually, that is hamstring strength. Um, so I recommend, uh, building up your hamstrings, uh, things like deficit pulls off the floor. Good for leg drive. So more legs, less back. Um, I like, um, I even like things like, uh, the hamstring curls, the RDLs, the hip bridges. Um, and, and also, um, you know, not a lot of people are thinking about doing this, but when you start losing technique and your hips are popping up, just stop there. And, and work on keeping your chest lifting off the ground. It's just building the capacity. Um, that's that's a that's a good way to kind of attack that. Okay. Keep going down. Oh, I had a good one. I lost it. Okay. Any ideas on how to stimulate heavier lifts when you have limited bands and dumbbells? Um, so, 
Think about this for a second. This is really interesting. If you have three sets of dumbbells, so let's say, for instance, and this is what I started with, a set of 35s, a set of 50s, a set of 70s, right? So I've got three pairs. And then um, I add one band to it, right? So let's say I have one light band. Now I've got six, seven, eight pairs, okay? Or three, four, five, six pairs. Then if I add one more band, I've got seven, eight, nine. Then if I add a thicker band, I'm 10, 11, 12. Then I can put two bands on each thing. Then I can put three bands on each thing. So with three sets of dumbbells and three sets of bands, you have 30 potential pairs of dumbbells that you can create. So um, don't uh, underestimate the efficacy of, of doubling bands up to create, especially works really good on presses, on things like RDLs, even on rows. If you think about those three movements, those are really big meat and potato movements that you can get a lot out of in terms of loading. Um, if it's the point where like, I just, I don't have any kind of significant band tension, overpressure is good. So this is where a buddy presses down on top of the bells to make them harder. That's really effective. Now you can do that in pressing movements and in pulling movements where they're putting pressure against the elbows when they're pulling, or if they're putting pressure against the hands when you're, when you're bench pressing, that's a really effective hypertrophy method. Beyond that, increasing the repetitions. So to, to test the capacity of the muscle or decreasing the tempo. So going moving a little slower to keep more time under tension, or even in throwing in isometrics or doing different types of holds, working positional strength. Those are all different ways to create intensity out of light weight. Good question. These are things that we use in dumbbell anarchy. This is like basically all of our strategies. All right, Jack Attack, tips for doing a mini cut, length, or just tips in general. If it's a mini cut, I think four to six weeks is a good length. If it's a legit cut, I think anywhere in that eight to 16 week is a good mark, depending on how you're spawning, how much you want to cut down, and what your starting point is. Um, a lot of this depends on your entry point. So if you're like somebody like me, you're like, okay, I'm around 10% body fat right now. I want to get down to seven. I'm going to do a four-week cut. Um, it's going to be the kind of thing where I'm trying to preserve as much muscle mass as I can, but just harden up a little bit and then continue from there. That, that might be a good, a good length to kind of go through it. If you're somebody who's like, hey, I'm way more than 10% body fat. I'm closer to 20% body fat. What you might do is maybe instead of doing a mini cut, you might think like, hey, Let's just do this right, because if you try to cut really hard, really fast, you're going to lose muscle. So, um, so you know, you might say, I want to lose one to two pounds a week over the course of eight weeks or 12 weeks, and you won't lose much muscle mass at all, especially if you're doing it right, like we do in the 30-day shredder thunder cuts. We use the protocols to kind of balance those anabolic and catabolic signals. Um, but a slower trajectory is usually um, better composition and better maintained. So anything that happens really fast is usually a poor composition or not well maintained. So if I lose a lot of weight fast or if I gain a lot of weight fast, either I'm going to rebound and come back up real quick for the weight or you can end up in a situation where you gain a lot of weight but it's not quality mass. Um, so I'm a fan, or a fan of slower things. The reason we do the three-day shred is just to kind of give people exposure. And uh, uh, honest to God truth, most of the people in this 30-day shred are – signing up for the next 30 day shred and turning it into an eight week cut because they, they see the results and they like where it's going, they want to continue. Um, good question, Jack. All right, let's see if we got any more. I think we hit them all, dude, we hit them all. Oh shit, okay. Are body comp changes possible on maintenance? Um, yeah, you can recomp for sure. Uh, a general formula I like to use for recomp is 12 to 15 calories per pound of body weight. This is where your mass is going to stay the same. So the weight sticks. So let's say right now I'm, you know, 244 pounds. I want to stay at 244, but I want to see myself hardening up. Now I can do that a couple different ways. Um, I can reduce my calories from where I'm at right now, um, or, or I can increase my workload, um, or I can do something like change up my macros. So for this cut, what I'm doing is I'm bumping the protein up and I'm reducing the carbohydrates and fat. I'm still eating a similar amount of calories but it's just higher amounts of protein content. I'm doing more of an intermittent fast, or I'm hitting this like fasted cardio, fasted depletion. That's great for hardening up and getting into the adipose tissue. But I'm also feeding a lot around training to create an anabolic signal so that I can preserve or even build some of that muscle mass. You want to replace the fat with muscle. It takes a while, right? Um, but a, a good recomp can be four to, four to eight weeks. So, uh, you know, over the next four weeks, I'm going to track my progress. My weight, I'm aiming to stay the same, but I just want to start to get harder. Um, and that's just a math equation a lot. You got to do a lot of self-observation. That's why we do so many check-ins, you know, every week to make sure we're not going too fast or not fast enough. Have you ever squatted a human? Um, uh, I just overhead squatted Camille once. It was fine. 
I don't know. I mean, if you have no other options, I could see that. Um, you could also get a lot out of the body weight movement. So I feel like that's like higher risk stuff. Somebody gonna get hurt. Keep fucking around like that. Uh, all right. How do you fix shoulder pain with overhead movements? I recommend doing a variation of what we did today in our uh, chest day workout, right? So we started with shoulder prehab, um, posterior cuff stretch, pull apart, mutual lift, um, you know, external rotator exercises. Um, all that stuff is really good. And pay attention to what gives you relief and what you respond to. I also like these banded shoulder distractions and, and literally like every day I would do them, try to get it to a rhythm with it. Um, okay. How do you know if you're a novice or intermediate? Is that determined by the number of years lifting? Yeah, I would say like, you know, um, your experience, like if, if this is your first time getting exposure to a back squat and a deadlift, or if you've never really done a hypertrophy program before, I consider you a beginner. If you had been training for a number of years, maybe done CrossFit, you've done some straight cycles, or this and that, and you're familiar with the movements, I'd probably be more intermediate to advanced. Um, yeah, beginner is probably zero to six months. Advanced is probably you know six months to years, or intermediate six months to years. Tips for putting on size without gaining fat. It's going to be hard. Uh, it's a lot slower. So, you know, I was talking to my buddy Scott Dennis. He did a gain. He did a, like an accumulation phase for, God, Scott probably did a good like four months of accumulation. He put on body fat, uh, you know, that just comes with it. And at the end, after he cut down, he gained three pounds of muscle mass, right? And you're like, oh, that's not that much. But like literally that's what it takes. So anytime you, your body can't really doesn't discriminate between those anabolic and catabolic signals. If you're storing energy and growing, you're going to grow muscle and you're going to grow fat. If it's only going to be muscle, it's just going to be a lot slower. So um, some other things we mentioned was just like, you know, doing, doing that, but also doing fasting cardio to make sure that you are creating some uh, mobilization signals in your body to tap into glucose. So you might be like, all right, I'm, I'm going to lift, I'm going to eat a caloric surplus, but I'm still going to do fasted cardio every morning just to make sure that it's it's not, uh, it's not more quality mass, which again, it might be slower weight gain, but at least then you know you're you're keeping good insulin sensitivity. And that's really what it's all about. That insulin sensitivity is how well you, you store or burn fuel. Tips for putting, oh, that was the same one. Okay, here, let's go to another one. If you're struggling to eat enough protein, no, we already got that one. We already hit that one. I think we got them all. Dude. Yeah, we got a little more. Okay. Is it possible to do a 90-day uh, cut on the night? Yeah. So the question is, is it possible to do a cut on the 90-day get huge? Um, we have an athlete. His name is Tristan. He lost 100 pounds doing the 90-day get huge program. Now, he did it with a caloric deficit. So we recommend for that program, like, hey, if you're trying to gain size, eat caloric surplus. He did it with caloric deficit, but it's got so much volume. The rest periods are short that it is a great amount of capacity. So you could easily adapt it for hardening up or recomp um, because you're still, you're basically doing some version of like cardio weightlifting a little bit. You're creating anabolic signals, but your heart rate is up the whole time and your volume is pretty high and the rest periods are really short. So I was surprised at how like the guy got results. Like it's the Get Huge program, but you lost 100 pounds, but you have more muscle mass than when you started. I guess it really depends on the other half of the equation, which is your fuel intake. So it can be done for sure. Um, what exactly is SARMs and will help getting cut? Uh, SARMs stands for Selective Androgenic Receptor Modules. A lot of these are derivatives of peptides, which help signal cell receptors in your body to perform specific functions. So there are SARMs out there. Um, there's one called MK677. Um, there's um, another one called all LDG. I can't really remember the number off the top of my head. Um, I'm not a huge fan of SARMs. I'm sorry. I'm just not. One of the reasons isn't necessarily their effectiveness, but the fact that most people don't know what they're doing when they're using them and are getting them off the internet. And I feel like anytime you start messing with this stuff, one, you should have a doctor's oversight. Two, it should come from a compounding pharmacy. And three, there should be a continual communication process to understand how it's affecting your body. So if you were interested in that, I'd probably recommend going to some type of like longevity clinic um, or optimization clinic that 
uses peptides as part of its protocol. Obviously, a lot of people are using like hormone replacement therapy um, or growth hormone, whatever, as part of these like anti-aging clinics. But a lot of them now are starting to integrate peptides. And there are some peptides out there, not SARMs, that are amazing um, for not just for like performance, but for health too. So for instance, right now I'm taking a peptide called thymosin alpha one, which is a peptide to help stimulate your immune system. Um, so if you're interested in that, I recommend looking into it, but do it right. Be responsible. Don't fuck around with this stuff. It's serious. Um, you're, you're not, you're not playing with like uh, protein powder at the supplement store here. So uh, make sure you know what you're doing. Make sure you're getting it from a safe source. Oh, thank God, that's all. Wait, nope, almost. There we go. As a gym owner, I am now doing my live classes, and it's not programmed for my goals. What would you do on top of that? Um, you probably have to be more specific as to like what those goals are. Here's what I recommend. Everything you do as a gym owner, your your members are going to emulate like one degree shittier. So you really got to buy into your program. You have to believe in your program. Um, you know, if you're like, Hey, like, let me give you an example. Like, obviously I love bodybuilding, right? But I also believe in fitness. So I blend the two together. That way I'm not saying like, well, you guys do CrossFit, but I'm going to do bodybuilding because I think it's better. That's not really what it is. What I'm seeing, seeing is like, Hey guys, there's this really cool middle ground where you can have performance and aesthetics. And I think this is the best path to meet most goals that are in my gym, including myself. Um, if you have goals that are completely separate to that, like for instance, like if you're trying to be a CrossFit games competitor. Obviously, your program is going to look a little bit different from the people who just want to look good and feel good, which, by the way, is like 99% of people. So um, so what I recommend doing is do your classes, still do them, but then maybe in addition, put in your specialized work, like it's hypertrophy or strength work or whatever. You can still do that. Just make sure you keep the main in the main thing. And, and if it's not, if you don't believe in it anymore, that's okay. If you're like, hey, I just I don't think this is the best way to train, that's fine because you need to believe in it. Your members will feel that if you don't believe in it, right? I see this all the time with like, um, let's say, an Olympic lifting coach who you know wants athletes, but they want to do CrossFit, so he starts coaching CrossFit classes, and and he's doing it fine, but he doesn't really believe in it. It's, it ends up being kind of a watered down CrossFit program and almost a watered down Olympic lifting program. Pick what you want to be. And, and be really good at it. And the people, your clients that want that will be attracted to you, um, to your goals and to the results you're getting. That's what I've seen. Like, you know, we don't have a lot of people in our muscle anarchy program that have desire to win CrossFit games. We have a lot of people who are like, hey, I love CrossFit, but I don't want to be hurt anymore. And I just want to look it. I'm like, well, that's me. That's why we're able to communicate effectively because you're genuine and authentic in, in, that, uh, in that vision. And you'll attract the clients that adopt those same goals. So that's what I recommend. I hope that was a really long answer to a short question. All right. Do thermogenics, uh, thermogenesis truly work? I don't know, it depends athlete to athlete. I've found success with it. I don't know how much that is actually stating off appetite versus heating up your core temperature, but I definitely think that uh, there is a benefit for fat loss there. I just don't know exactly what the mechanism is. Do you have trouble keeping your nutrition on point during quarantine? I mean, there are some places out there where dot, dot, dot. I think I get the question. Check this out. See that? We just got that. That is my 16 cubic foot freezer. I'm so excited because now I can fill that up with paleo power meals, with good meat, and all I got to do is thaw it out. My diet is simple. I usually eat the same thing most meals. Maybe chicken breast, rice, spinach, maybe some almonds. Um, just, you know, it's, it's consistent. So I try to remove any of the stuff that's going to get in the way from the kitchen and just fill up my stores with things that I know are going to provide nutritional value. And in some ways, that almost makes you more compliant because there's nothing else to eat and there's nowhere to go out. So uh, it just depends on how you're attacking it. But don't fill your house up with Pringles. Do you think smelling salts work? I don't know. I've never really used them. Um, I've used other stimulants, um, especially in baseball. Baseball, little drugs, especially when I was playing, there was all kinds of stimulants and stuff. And um, you know, I, I feel like if you're going to speak with any authenticity or, or with knowledge on a subject, you really kind of have to have done it yourself. So I can say stimulants do work, um, but they're dangerous too. 
don't say about that. <laughs> Especially the hardcore students. How much are you weighing? 244 right now. Um, yeah, 244, trying to hold around here. I'd like to hold 240 and, and do a recomp, just get a little harder, and maybe do another accumulation towards the end of the summer. But, you know, I'm going to do this next cut, next 30 day shred with our group. And, um, you know, I'm going to be really um, uh, in tune with how my body's responding, more or less calories. Uh, but the idea is to try to hold on to the mass and just get harder as I go. You can see that hardness in, like, you know, in the mirror, certainly. You can really see it well. If you were to pick one supplement, no brand in particular, what would it be and why? It would depend on the goals. Um, one universal supplement that I think has the most context is protein powder because it's being able to fill in the pieces for the macronutrient balance, especially if you're doing something like bodybuilding, you're trying to put on mass where protein intake is really fucking high. It's hard to get that meat. It's hard to process all that meat. So protein powder is really invaluable. Same thing with cutting. You know, when you're cutting, I believe in a high protein diet and a low carbohydrate, low fat restriction diet to be able to stimulate glucagon. So protein shakes are really valuable there. Um, obviously, like pre-workout has a context within heavy living if you're lifting, if you like it, um, maybe for performance. But in terms of just, you know, I, I think the foundation is diet and protein powder. There's something this is a way to kind of fill in the diet, both for the macronutrients like protein, carbs, and fat, but also even things like dietary supplements like vitamins for filling in micronutrients as well. Oh man, a lot of good questions. How many cheat meals would you do in a week? Uh, I think one to two is a good, one to two is a good ratio. Any more than that and you're kind of probably going off on that. Could your program be used in unison with CrossFit program meant to be fully replaced and additionally, what is the blank? Okay, I can't read the full question, but yeah, it totally can. What I would do is I would just do the hypertrophy work and then do your class program on top of you. You would like muscle anarchy and I'd be like, okay, I'm gonna do my hypertrophy work and then I'm gonna do my class conditioning work. You probably don't need to do the strength work and the heavy CrossFit Metcons on top of it because hypertrophy is so destructive to the body that the priority is more healing. But in terms of capacity athleticism, I would pick kind of like lighter CrossFit workouts, body weight stuff or capacity based stuff to balance it out. Going. Could you ever complete the Thunder Cuts doing CrossFit? We need to be paired with more weightlifting. Yeah, you can totally do it. We design it with CrossFit. So, you know, um, there are ways we give people so many options to customize this program. When they're doing the Thunder Cuts, they'll start with a morning depletion or car, steady state cardio progression. So that's going to move on a continuum. It's going to go up five, weeks every, uh, five minutes every week. They'll start at 15, 20, 25, 30, and 35 respectively in, in that time frame. That's the base, it's fasted cardio with BCAAs. Then they do that hypertrophy work, and there's an option in there to do uh, you know some additional CrossFit training with it. So we program some really great CrossFit workouts, but I would recommend the hypertrophy work stuff, and then maybe the CrossFit, and I would really feed around that session because that's gonna be the one where you wanna create the anabolic signals. Um, so yes, totally. Now, if you're in the boat where you're just like, I don't need the CrossFit, I'm already at a workable level of body fat, and you're you're reducing your calories to the point where that's a little too much, then you could skip that, or you could keep the calories a little higher to accommodate for that additional workload. The, the result is, is kind of the same in the end. It's just fuel input versus output. Thank you. Um, lunging 400, 800 meters, thoughts. That can be fine. Uh, your legs will be sore. <laughs> not a bad sub for leg day. Um, metabolic stress, not a lot of mechanical loading, but uh, there is an effect there. And uh, I give yourself a couple days before training your legs again. Uh, okay. Oh. Second part was associated with the cost of your program. Okay. So, yeah, the cost of our program um, for the for muscle anarchy, I believe the program without any discounts is 35. Dumbbell Anarchy, um, you get access to it with Muscle Anarchy if you're kind of not sure one or the other, but I think we have deals to purchase year long for like 99 bucks. And I think there are also deals to get uh, Dumbbell Anarchy for 9.99. You have to look back and see the notions maybe find but I don't remember off the top of my head. 30-day um, shred, okay? That's the one where you get 
access to muscle anarchy and dumbbell anarchy and a private Facebook group where you're doing check-ins and doing photos and getting advice on your dietary rotation, how you're rotating high and low calorie days and the PDF with the full program with the full month and the chance to win the grand cash prize is retail $79.99, but I'm seeing a lot of purchases for $67, so I think there's a code out there. So yeah, I mean, I think the, I think the best value is that 30-day shred because you get the program, the coaching, and the method to follow. And you know, if you did it and you're like, hey, this was awesome, I want to turn it into an eight-week cut, you can sign up for another one, and you can just kind of clean on your own if you wanted to um, with, without the coaching. But I think that's probably the best bang for your buck that we have going on right now. I've answered all the questions. Thank you guys for tuning in. This was fun. Still got eight people doing anarchy over here. Um, okay, so tune in tomorrow. It's going to be back day. Uh, it's going to be awesome. We're going to get thick. We're going to get wide. I'm going to show you a bunch of variations, some really cool exercises. That's at 10 a.m. Eastern. You can follow it on Instagram Live or YouTube Live. If you want to see today's workout in full length, go to our YouTube channel, Thunderbird, the Thunderbird channel, T-H-U-N-D-R, and you can see the that video is addition to all the other workout videos. Um, check out the 30-day shred. That registration is open for the rest of the week, but it kicks off next Monday, so if you're interested in that, try to get into that one. Check us out um, at Thunderbro at Dave Fre Freaking Lipson. You can DM us. Um, you know, if you're interested in any of the products, whatever, go to thunderbro.com and let us know how we can help you, how we can serve you best. Thanks for tuning in. This was awesome. Dave Lipson out. Thanks, guys. Miss you. <laughs>